right now, I'm finishing up a series of these long drawings, and I really feel as though when I've done the eighth one, that I probably will move on to something else because I really feel as though that's, I feel kind of like a plum that's dried up into a prune, and I've, I've just, I've gone everywhere I can go with that series, and, and uh, so you get to a point where you think, all right, you know, I've, I've investigated, I've done all the investigating I can in this particular area. Okay, my name is Allison Hildreth, and I do painting, drawing, printmaking, installation art, a little bit of sculpture, not much sculpture. I go back and forth between all of them because I find that each discipline uh, informs the other discipline in a way that is hard to describe unless you're right in it doing it. But halfway through a print, I'll think, oh, I've got a painting in here. There's always a little seed bed that, is, that, that can be developed in something else. So I don't really want to become repetitious in the work. I, I find that, that all of a sudden you know that's this stultifying feeling and then you move on into something else and sometimes it's really helpful to move on to, to a different discipline and that solves it. So all during all the things that I've done I've always gone back to printmaking. I find Printmaking can clarify things in, in, in a way that even drawing doesn't for me. I, you just have to be, your, your ideas have to get down more clearly in a print. This is an etching. You draw the line in, and everything that is not drawn into is not going to print. You put this plate in an acid bath, ferric chloride or nitric acid, and the acid just eats the line. Every element in, in these etching plates are equally important. I think I am probably going to start a series of prints. Um, and um, I, I have this idea. I'm interested in just migrations. I'm really interested in, in um, environmental issues. Um, um, they don't need to necessarily have to be political like climate change, but just, you know, how, how we live and adjust to our environment and the, and the kind of the natural order and chaos. And um, it's, it's so big that I haven't been able to work my way into it and kind of find my place in it because I think you can only, I can only do something if I can find how it is that I relate to that thing. So. Um, um, I haven't discovered that yet. So right now I'm in my kind of gathering period of, of just pulling information in and, and trying to, you know, at some point I'll probably plop down in the middle of something. But right now I can't really make too much sense of it. You never really know what's going to happen when you start working. And, and well, some conceptual artists have a pretty good idea of how things, but I never know how things are going to come out. Every mark you put down changes everything all the time. And I'm very apt to wipe out, cut out, wipe out, whatever, destroy. It's easy with paint, and that's what I love about painting. That's the really, I, I love that, creating and destroying and that ongoing process of painting. And you get that whole history through the layers of painting um, that I find really exciting, which makes me want to go back to painting right now that I think of it. <laughs> I call this the beekeepers. I think I had actually gone to a show at the Metropolitan Museum and seen Bruegel's image of the beekeepers, and it was such a great image um, that it kind of embedded itself in my mind. These are portraits of my grandmother and my grandfather um, embedded in this kind of netting, which is script, which I guess I've always been interested in. Um, at some point, I just got fascinated with the way things hang. I have a whole series of vertical elements that just are suspended. And so I thought, well, I'll just do this in three dimensions. 
I, I did this installation piece, and these are just a few parts of it. I worked with a glass maker for the glass puppets, and he made these shapes, and then I wired them together. So here's one of these little puppets before he's gotten his, his wings. And I was using one poem, which I wrote over and over and over again. So it's called Chosen by the Stars by Zbigniew Herbert. It is not an angel, it is a poet. He has no wings, only a right hand covered by feathers. He beats the air with his hand, flies up three inches, and immediately falls again. When he has fallen all the way, he kicks with his legs, hangs for a moment, waving his feathered hand. Oh, if he could break from the gravity of clay, he would dwell in the star's nest. He would leap from ray to ray. He would, but at the thought they would be earth for him, the stars fall down in fright. The poet shades his eyes with his feathered hand. He no longer dreams of flight, but of a fall that draws like lightning, a profile of infinity. Nice poem.